Brian's untimely death also touches us as a diocesan family. For as we all know, Brian was a model seminarian, well on his way to embracing the sacred orders. In the short time that I've been here, he always impressed me and so many others by his dedication, his loyalty, his work ethic, but also by his warmth and his unique sense of humor. When I first met Brian, I thought that our conversations as bishop and seminarian would be somewhat labored, because of my first impression of him was that he was somewhat of an introvert. But it was actually quite the opposite. He was always engaging, funny, and even prone to a little teasing, even with his bishop. <laughs> Such was the case in our last, well, meaningful conversation that he and I had, which took place right here in this cathedral on the day of ordination when we ordained uh, Pedro de Rio to the priesthood. Brian served that Mass, and when I arrived back in the sacristy, I had all my things with me, and as I typically do, I hand my, my homily, which is about five or six pages, to Father Julie, the Master of Ceremonies, and he always knows to make sure that it gets in a place where it's truly secure, otherwise he's going to be preaching the homily. <laughs> and so he gives it to Brian and says, go put this up here near the pulpit. And so Brian does, but when he gets back, he kind of makes his way over toward me and he says, you know, Bishop, I noticed something. You don't number your pages. <laughs> and I said, yeah, this is not a big deal. And he says, well, that could be a disaster in the wrong hands. <laughs> so the mass went on, and we got to the point where I needed to give the homily, and I was sitting right where his picture is, and he was kneeling in front of me, just getting ready to stand up, and his mother Julie gave me the homily, and I looked at him and I said, this was in the right hands, wasn't it? <laughs> and he winked, and he smiled. That's what I'll take for the remainder of my days, and what a gift it was. God bless you, Brian, with eternal life. May you find mercy in the Lord. May you be given the beatific vision of heaven. For every day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a single day. And until each one of us, God willing, will join you there, may you remember us in your heaven and your session. Amen. Originally, I declined, to, I declined the offer to preach this homily, but after several days went by and praying about it, I realized it would be fitting. I was ordained less than two months ago, and one of the few things a deacon can do is preach. Brian probably would tell me, well, you better do your job. <laughs> I can imagine Brian making two requests for his funeral. No eulogy, and not to use the color white. I suppose I'll grant him one of those requests. <laughs> but God willing, when I see him again, I'm going to give him a hard time. Because I'll probably die an old man, and there'll only be a few people to pray for him. <laughs> Brian, on the other hand, has had thousands and thousands of prayers offered up, countless masses, and numerous saints have vote. If he isn't if he isn't on the fast track to heaven, I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> These prayers and support have been a true testament to everyone's faith. Faith is the bedrock of our lives. The virtue by which we submit our intellect and will to God. The virtue by which we assent our whole being to God. That's exactly what we have all been doing doing during this difficult time. Resisting the temptation to turn in on ourselves or isolating ourselves from God. Just the opposite. All of us have been turning with our whole being to God, turning ourselves over to Him. Not seeking answers because one, they wouldn't make sense this side of heaven, and two, they wouldn't remove the sadness we feel. 
But we turn to God because He has revealed to us that He loves us more than we can comprehend. And though He may seem distant at times, we have said past faith that the Lord is walking side by side, always there to lean on. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We wouldn't be praying, rather we wouldn't even be able to pray, if we didn't have the utmost confidence in life beyond the grave. We don't hope or wish for eternal life. We know it exists. We are a people of the resurrection. And though this reality remains unseen, we know by the power and truth of God that it truly happened, and that we participate in the resurrection through our sacramental life. It is by our faith in the sacraments that we are intimately connected with each other, a bond that transcends family and parish, a bond that goes beyond our diocese, is not limited by state or country or even the grave. And for this reason we have faith that Brian is not separated from us, he has simply gone ahead of us. Which is why we can say that St. Paul, in life and in death, we belong to the Lord.